And as uh, students, which I imagine most of you are, you are uh, going through a very interesting time in your life. Here is my prediction, without knowing any one of you personally. Number one, you feel awfully old. You feel that you have wasted your time already. You feel that you are 19, 20, 21, whatever age you are. And oh my God, so much had to be done and you've not done anything. And there are people who are younger than you who are killing it in life and they're making it happen and you're still stuck, confused what you should be doing. You are most likely confused and clueless. You perhaps don't even enjoy what you're doing right now. You are questioning whether you're doing the right thing or not, whether you should be continuing with this or not, but you also have this overwhelming guilt of whether all these thoughts should even be nurtured in your head because it's a lot of your parents' money that has already been invested. It's a lot of your time that has already been invested. You have no idea of what you could be doing otherwise. And all of this then makes you feel like a loser. And you constantly live in FOMO. You live in a way where you want to do so much but you're scared of everything that's happening around you that you ironically end up doing nothing. And you keep feeling bad about it because you want to do so much. And that loop never ends. It just continues to spiral and spiral and spiral. And the next thing it knows, it sucks you in within this dark trap that is very hard to escape and get out of. And I have been in that spot. I have I've been in that spot. I absolutely understand, appreciate, respect all the things that you're feeling. And what I want to do in the conversation today for the next seven to 10 minutes is to essentially leave you with hope that whatever you're feeling through is transient. Whatever you're feeling through is temporary. What you're feeling through is almost baseless. But that doesn't mean that you don't take it seriously. What it means is that you need to be aware of why you're feeling what you're feeling because that will be the first step towards helping you in dealing with it. Number one, you're not old. I remember feeling immensely old when I was your age. And I can't begin to tell you how young 42 is, which is who I will become in a few months from now. It all boils down to how you feel you are in that moment of time and the direction you're headed towards. When you're young, no one expects you to be sorted. No one, frankly, expects you to know everything. No one expects you to be conclusive about where you will be, how much will you earn, where will you end up in life, what will life be all about for you. But we think that everyone expects that. And because we think that time is passing by, we are always, always scared that we are losing out. The truth is that you will always underestimate what you can do over a decade, but you will always overestimate what you can do in a year. I'll say that again. You will always overestimate what you can do in a year, but you will always underestimate what you will do over a decade. So when you're only 20, one year adds almost 5% of your life that has gone by. And that is a fairly big chunk of time being added. If you're 20 and you think about a decade, that's 50% of your life that you've already lived. So if I stand in front of you arguing that you are still young, that you have a lot of time on your hands, you think I'm bullshitting because in your head to grapple that 50% of your life will be spent in you getting to a certain point of stability, it's a lot. And I am here telling you it's not. It isn't. Because don't think about you going from 20 to 30. Think about the fact that even when you're 30, you will have more than 50 plus years to live. You wouldn't have even reached half of where you would be in your life if you take your entire life into picture. Give yourself the joy of time because that's frankly the only thing you have. And it is such a precious asset because I would any day trade to be younger than to be richer. Warren Buffett, one of the richest people on earth, worth, I don't know, hundreds of billions of dollars, is aged 93. And if I ask all of you, hey, would you want to be Warren Buffett today? 
I hope none of you say yes, because what will you do with $100 billion if you're age 93, when you know that you have only so many years to live? You would much rather be where you are today and live in the hope, which is a fairly good hope to have, that you will still make enough money for you to live comfortably and have lots to share and dispose of. So please believe that what you have today is the most valuable asset that no money can ever buy, and that is your time. And it depends on how you utilize your time going forward that's going to define and create and shape your life as against the time that you spend today wallowing that you are already old. Don't make that mistake. Also recognize that everybody is in the same boat. I remember when I went to ISB for my MBA, I used to think I'm the only loser. I used to think I'm the only one who doesn't know what I want to do in life because everyone around me was just so sorted. I was surrounded by very smart people. They were IIT gold medalists and lawyers and doctors and the brightest minds that the country had. And here I was a duffer with only one year of experience, no clue of what I wanted to do a dropout from an education that I thought would be my entire life. And I was frankly using an MBA to turn around my life while the others seemed to me were very, very clear of what the MBA would do for them. And once ISB got over and I was catching up with my batchmates from ISB and we were just thinking about those old times, people were like, you know what? We were just as lost as you are. We were just as confused as you were. We were just as completely bashing ourselves, thinking of ourselves as the only loser and thought that everyone else was smarter than us, like you were. And that's the truth. The truth is that if you believe that you are a loser who hasn't figured yourself out, it's true for everybody. It's true for everybody. Everybody's just pretending. Like you're also trying to pretend put up a strong face, put up a facade, trying to project that, no, 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 I'm sorted. I know my shit out. But no, we don't. We don't. And that's okay. That is okay. But what's important for you to recognize is that you're not alone. That you're not feeling this because there's something wrong with you. You're feeling this because everybody is feeling the same way. It's the age for you to feel as if, you are being left behind. When the truth is you're not. Life is very, very, very long and you're just getting started. So I wouldn't want you to bash yourself up. I wouldn't want yourself to blame yourself for where you are. I wouldn't want you to think that just because you don't like where you are or you're still confused or whether this is the right thing for you or not, you will end up as a loser. You won't. It's been, I graduated from school in 1998, most of you were not even born then. And now when I look at my batchmates from school, there are always this eclectic mix, right? And you've just come out from school, so you will all know. In school, there are these very padhaku bachas who you know will do something in life and they'll get to the right point. And then there are these lafangas who will, in your head, never make it. They're always wasting their parents' money. They're always whiling away time. They're always doing all these illegal activities that gets them in trouble. And you don't think that they will ever do anything worthwhile in life. You almost look down upon them. You're like, inse to kuch honi The truth is, when it's been 20 plus years, and it's been 20 plus years for me, and our school was not an aberration. Our school was just as normal as any other school. There is virtually no difference between the ones who were killing it back in school, acing the exams, getting to the top universities, and the ones who were just barely passing, the ones who were barely making it, the ones who were constantly outside of the class as against inside the class. There is no difference. Everything evens out. Everything becomes such a tight range where it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter which country you're working in. It doesn't matter which company you're working for. It becomes such a tight range that it's ridiculous how life evens out eventually. But we kill ourselves in that journey in trying to make ourselves better than everyone else. This isn't a competition. You're not running a race with anybody. You are not in a race with anybody. 
you are just walking your own path and the worst thing you will do in that journey is to constantly blame yourself that you're not figuring it out and finally fomo it's a thing it's a it's a real thing and here is why it's happening and i want you to know that it's not your fault when i was growing up my comparison set was at best 50 kids like kids from my school kids from my colony that was it so if my parents really had to compare me with anybody it was those 50 like sharma ji ka beta in 50 logon mein se ek tha it wasn't some fictional entity that existed in some world outside of my imagination it was a real being and that made it really easy for us because while we did feel that complaining is not working out the truth was these were 50 people that we kind of knew we knew what the strengths were we knew what the weaknesses were we knew that if you really had to that we could in some way defeat them if not academically then somewhere else but today all of you for no fault of yours are comparing yourself to the entire world because that's the comparison set the comparison set is not your college kids and your colony kids or your hostel kids your comparison set is every single person online everyone on instagram everyone on twitter everyone on discord everyone on linkedin is your comparison set so you can't escape that you can't escape the fact that despite how high an achiever you are there is going to be somebody out there that is killing it and doing it better than you and you will constantly live in fomo because they will be doing something that you would want to do they are perhaps traveling to a certain place that you would want to go to they're wearing the clothes that you would want to they're earning the kind of money that you would like they have the kind of opportunities already that you would have loved for yourself they're studying in those places they are hobnobbing with those friends they're doing things that you would want to do but you can't and in that realization lies two things number one it's not your fault humans were designed they weren't designed none of us were designed to compare ourselves with such a massive unit because we were just fighting very small battles battles within our school our colony and so on but now suddenly you're fighting a battle which is around the world so give yourself that sense of awareness that you are being raised in a world that you're experiencing a certain world that is very 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 different from the world that was and your parents nearly do not understand that a lot of people who are older to you will very rarely understand that and it's only you and you alone who has to convince yourself that this is not something you can blame yourself for but at the same time you have to deal with it and the way to deal with fomo is to actually go and make it into an energy fomo can suck the life out of you can make you feel paralyzed can make you feel like you have the worst life on earth you have the saddest life on earth or fomo can become your strength it can become your energy and the way to do that is to spend your 20s your years in college your formative years when you're meeting so many people when you're experiencing a whole new self of yours exploring spend that time exploring not trying to settle but trying to explore the world wants you to settle and you are falling for that trap my friend you also want to settle you want to finish your education as fast as possible you want to get a great job as fast as possible you want to start earning money as fast as possible you then want to settle down get married as fast as possible have kids as fast as possible get that house that car that vacation all of those things that you have planned for yourself organized in your head as milestones in your life as fast as possible and that is settling that is you working towards settlement that's you working towards a sense of stability that you would want in your life and i'm arguing that's the wrong way of thinking about the world in today's world the wrong way of thinking about life in today's world instead explore explore because you frankly have no basis to settle you haven't yet discovered the world in its true glory there is so much that's happened in the world so much has changed and so much is changing so rapidly 
that you need to spend time in trying to figure it out. Explore. While in college. While in college, do not just study what you study. Go out and study different fields. Fields that you are not being taught in college. Whether it's digital marketing, whether it's Web3 development, whether it's content writing, whether it's any other passion of yours, any other hobby of yours, any other interest of yours that you want to see how far it takes you. Go ahead and pursue that. As a student, pick up internships. Study with the finest people out there who are doing this. And ask yourself this question, do I enjoy it? Do I enjoy it enough for me to continue pursuing it? And if the answer is yes, continue to pursue it. And keep continuing to explore. Because as long as you keep doing that, you will have a playbook. And here's the playbook that I want to leave all of you before I end today. Spend your 20s exploring. Spend your 20s getting to know yourself. Spend your 20s in making mistakes and learning from it. Spend your 20s in figuring out what all does the world have to offer that ties in with who you are and what you're good at. And by the time you're done with your 20s, find that answer. Find that answer of what is it that you're truly good at after having dealt and experimented with a lot of things that you know is right up your alley and you will kill it and you will do it better than most other people you know. And then spend your entire 30s in just doing that, in getting so good at it that very few people can beat you at it. So by the time you reach 40, you either would have made so much money that you would never have to work for money or you would have a job which doesn't feel like a job. And both of these is a great place to be. That would be my wish, hope, and request from you. As against trying to settle as fast as you can in your 20s, and then realizing that what you settled for is not what you wanted. And you don't have to look too far away to see that there are so, so, so many people in the world, including our parents most likely, who are living lives that they didn't want to live, but they have no choice because that's the only life they know how to live. And you wouldn't want to be there. 